Hi everybody, this is Craig Tanner for the Mindful Eye and the Photo of the Week on the Daily Critique. This week's Photo of the Week was created by Mike, who's an intermediate photographer from Florida. Mike shot the image with a Canon 5D Mark II 7200 image stabilized lens at 70 millimeters, ISO 100 f8 and 1 1,000th 1, of a second. So the metadata, I want to talk more about some of those technical things in just a minute. Mike says that he was shooting from a boat here, so he was working handheld. And backstory information, I'm paraphrasing here, Mike says this is the start of an international sailboat race held on Biscayne Bay called the Rolex Cup. He says he shot this race for the last three years and he never really gotten anything that he liked. He said he felt like up until this shot his pictures either looked like everyone else's or they were missing something. And he says that when he saw this V forming from an approaching front he knew that he wanted to include it in one of the starts. He says that it was late in the afternoon and there weren't too many starts left and he tried to line his boat up as the gun went off and was in the wrong place. Luckily there were a couple of boats that went over the line early. They did a restart and that gave him the chance to come back and be in the right place for his composition. At the end of his backstory he says, I tell people it took three years to make this image because it did. I definitely want to talk more about that later um, in the video. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, really you know, love Mike's conscious choice to work with this really powerful shape um, in his overall composition. Clearly it's a beautiful rhythm of uh, the main subject, which is the sail of the sailboats. Um, it's not just that, it's, it's a lot of other things. It's uh, the placement of this as a subject really uh, helps to push us out into the image and is congruent with the idea of the start here and all this energy in the image. The size of this and where it is in the image carves out negative space that ends up being this uh, real long triangle shape and that helps to create even more rhythm in the image. Um, it's really beautiful too how the overall shape is the same but then you have the variation that is the hallmark of rhythm versus just straight repetition. You don't have the hard edge line. You have these beautiful textures, have the shape within the shape. Um, all of those things that help to push away from things that can be static, just pattern or just the same thing repeating over and over and over again. Really beautiful when we can get the variation in there. Another thing that I really enjoy about Mike's image is the quality of light relative to the subject matter. Uh, even though this looks like a pretty bright part of the day, very beautiful the way this light is still coming down pretty hard is backlighting the sails. It's really helping to make this shot work. It's really helping the boats in the image to be a main subject and it really helps to create this beautiful sequence of information. Not only implies energy that's moving in the image like this, it helps to create a lot of depth in the image uh, from near to far. Um, I love the fast shutter speed here and the real dynamic high energy texture of the surface of the water and uh, talk a lot about how when we get to an image where sort of each subject area represents a different type of texture as to how powerful that can be for the viewer. It can really help to drive a very strong impact in an image in terms of it having a graphic quality and being bold and simplifying things and I think that feeling here definitely goes along with the subject matter in a lot of different ways. I said I wanted to mention a couple of technical things and this is a good time to do it. And this image just looks incredibly tack sharp and Mike is working handheld here from a moving boat. So the concept of vibration reduction lenses if you're an icon shooter or IS if you're Canon and other camera manufacturers have different names sometimes it's in the camera that can really help us to get sharper pictures when we're not on the tripod choosing a very high shutter speed relative to your effective focal length like Mike has done here shooting effectively at 70 millimeters and he's at 1 1,000th of a second the rule is multiplying your focal length by two and putting one over that for sort of the starting point for a shutter speed where you might be able to hand hold in this case that would be 1 40th of a second. Mike is multiples of stops faster than that and that's helping and the other thing too is f8. He's shooting at a middle aperture on this lens stopping down a few stops from wide open and that is definitely going to help with overall sharpness versus shooting wide open or stopping way down to minimum aperture so I just wanted to mention 
those technical things here. Another thing I really enjoy about Mike's image, even though it's subtle here, is you get in a very dynamic image a sense of dynamic color. You do have um, a lot of cool. You've got a lot of blue and a lot of blue-green. I love the way the red comes in and adds a third color idea, the RGB color triad, the three colors of light. Very, very powerful color relationship that sets up there. Love the bird here. I think in a bigger print, it's a really nice counterpoint to all this energy and really beautiful from a proportion standpoint. All these ideas are so big and bold and they're pointing out. And then you have the bird here in a very dynamic place. Another form of movement, another idea about implied movement, but I just love the proportion of this. And I do think in a very big print, this would play really well. And I think these ideas could play in a big print. This looks like the city back there on the bay in the background. It would take a big print to bring that in, but it's neat that that detail is in the background of the image. You know, at the end of the video here, I want to come back to this idea of Mike saying this image was three years in the making, and um, from having shot for a very, very long time commercially and personally, and had project work, um, had properties that I photographed over a long period of time, landscapes that I've photographed my whole career. Some of them I've been going back to for 20 years now and people that I've built relationships with that I've photographed over a very long period of time, three years, five years, seven years. Um, you know, One of the things that Mike is pointing out to us here is that this work that we do, particularly when we're talking about shooting very big spaces where we don't have much control over the variables, this is very different than shooting a flower or shooting a person or shooting an object. We start to talk about working in big spaces it really can be a big investment of time. It's not just being in the right place at the right time, it's building up an understanding of what it takes. And one of the things that I love here is just in this shoot itself, Mike's tenacity and uh, sort of trying to be here in the right place, you know, where all these things can separate, where the cloud can be over this first boat and he can have his camera position to make a really beautiful rhythmic composition out of this whole thing. And to miss that, and then to come back around and uh, get into a different place when the boats uh, start again. Um, you know, there's so much that goes into the things that we do that work. Um, but most of us know that, uh, for the most part, it's just straight ahead uh, hard work and uh, tenacity. And to be tenacious, I think you really have to love what you do. And one of the other things that I wanted to say, just in addition to reinforcing this idea that it can require a big investment in time when we're shooting big spaces to start to get pictures uh, that are very powerful. So you should be patient with yourself. You also really need to check in with yourself and see if, in fact, you do love your subject matter. Because we're really pushed to these places where we create images that have a lot of impact. It's uh, going to require a lot of work and to work that hard and to be that tenacious, most of the time that is going to have to be powered by love or you're just not going to have the energy to do the things that you need to do uh, to make these kinds of shots uh, happen. And I know from having had Mike on a few workshops how much he is motivated, one, to just get better as a photographer and also how much he loves the water. He's a sailor and how much he loves landscapes and all of that comes together. Uh, after three years uh, to this image, which is just a stunning, stunning shot of boats on the water. I'll say a big thank you to Mike for submitting the image. I want to say a big thank you to you for being here. Hope that you have a great weekend, and I hope to see you again very soon on the Mindful Eye.